Well, hey guys, welcome back to the Proverbs 31 Ministries podcast where we share biblical truth for any girl in any season. If you're watching on YouTube, hello. From the Proverbs 31 Ministries office, my name is Kaylee Olson. I'm your host, and you can already tell, guys, this is gonna be a little bit of a different episode and a different four weeks we're heading into. And I'm so excited. I've got some friends with me in the room. I would like for you guys to introduce yourselves. So let's start over here with Megan Ryan. Hey everyone, my name is Megan Ryan. I am the promotional copywriter at Proverbs 31 Ministries, which means I write marketing content. So if you get an email, I probably wrote it. And you're great at it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Amazing. So my name is Shay. I also work in content, um, but I work on Lisa Turker's content team. Mm-hmm. And my name is Ashley Jackson, and I am a part of all things social media. <laughs> yes, you are. And all three of you write in some form or capacity. You've got a book coming out. You guys wrote on a resource we're going to talk about soon. Yeah. I'm really excited mm-hmm. about it. But guys, we are going to take the next four weeks here at Proverbs on the podcast on our YouTube channel to talk about the topic of prayer, how we overcomplicate it, underestimate the power in it, and how to stay connected to God in seasons of disappointment and anxiety. It's a lot, but (laughs) it's going to be good. It's going to be so good. But I think one of the things that we need to establish here is that prayer is a journey and sometimes it can be a really bumpy one. Mm -hmm. I don't think uh, that we're all going to ever arrive when it comes to Mm -hmm. prayer. And there's a lot of seasons where I feel really confident. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like a flat out failure. Do you guys ever feel that way? Oh, yes. Absolutely. (laughs) Okay. So I think to get us started off on the right foot today, this is kind of a joke, but I mean, we're going to, we're going to get started this (laughs) way. Um, I think we should share moments where we feel like a prayer failure. That way we can help our listeners who are watching uh, or listening to the podcast understand like, hey, we've been there too. If you're feeling this way when it comes to prayer, We've all been there. Yes. So I'll go first. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I will, <laughs> we honor you. I will lay myself down here. Uh, group prayer or popcorn prayer gives me major anxiety. Uh, okay, okay. You know, because I end up spending, this is this is a major confession here. This makes me sound like a terrible person. No, no. I think more about what I'm going to say mm-hmm, in the prayer mm-hmm. than I really like pay attention to the prayer sometimes. And that makes me I feel like a, a failure. I will raise my hand and say, I also too only spend popcorn prayer thinking about what I'm going to pray <laughs> yeah. and not listening to the prayer. I feel yeah. like this might be a human confession. <laughs> Probably a human <laughs> confession. Human. Like, we want to be original, <laughs> yeah. but also not ramble. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Ashley, what's your prayer failure? Okay. So sometimes in prayer meetings or at church, and we're supposed to be praying about something very serious, I start thinking about lunch. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. What I'm going to where I'm going to go, what's at home. That's also, I think, connected to popcorn prayer. Sometimes so. if there's not a designated person to go last, then it can just, it can go on for yeah. a long time. Yeah. All right, Shay. That's so relatable. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. Um, okay, so me too. This confession kind of makes me feel like a bad person, but mm-hmm. I have a friend and we had been praying for a new job for her. And so we had been like, even just praying for job opportunities Mm -hmm. to come about. And then she had a few interviews with this company and she specifically asked me to pray and hopefully other people to pray too, Mm -hmm. but this is about me. So she asked me to pray for an interview she had at like two o'clock or something. And I was like, absolutely like standing with you in faith, praying (laughs) with you (laughs) on your team. Wouldn't you know, 301, you know, rolls around 305. And she's like, text me. She's like, thank you so much for praying. It went so well. And I forgot to pray at two o'clock for her interview. Mm -hmm. And I felt like the worst friend ever. Been there. I know. Been there. Because how do you even respond? You're like, oh, you're welcome. (laughs) You know, know. you were in my thoughts, but (laughs) you were not in my prayers. I forgot. Life moves really fast sometimes. It moves really fast, wouldn't you know? I stand with you in Yeah, I just felt, ugh, that was a big prayer failure moment. Yeah, Megan. I really, really relate to all of these. I'm like, <laughs> what, I, I don't know if I have any to add. Totally. Uh, I think I, I spend a lot more t- time keeping people in my thoughts than in my prayers. <laughs> people say, in your, our thoughts and prayers, like, what and thoughts bees. too? Yeah, Nothing, yeah. but that's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Because I'll, I will mistake thinking about something for praying about something. And or yeah. worrying about something. Or worrying or about something. analyzing something. Yes. 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 And <laughs> really thinking, okay, God hears all this and he knows everything I'm thinking so that it counts as prayer, but it's not intentional mm-hmm. on my behalf for sure. Uh, guys, these are all really funny things. Thank you for opening the floor with that. And I mean, we, we do take prayer very seriously around here, but I think it's, it's good to start off and kind of level the playing field and just admit like where we've gotten it wrong mm-hmm. because we know as part of 
prayer can kind of just be this thing that we feel like, oh, we have to do it. We have to be really good at it. Mm. And there are some times where we're going to fall short. I think another area that I have really felt like a prayer failure is always thinking of prayer as an event. Mm -hmm. So go with me here. When I was little, I was taught, you have to bow your head and close your eyes to pray. And I think whenever you grow up in the church, sometimes prayer is taught like that. Yeah. And so whenever I think of prayer as an event, and then I read verses in the Bible, like 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, that says to pray without ceasing, I think, I can't do that. Right. Yeah. Like I can't, if I'm treating prayer like an event, I can't close my eyes and pray all the time. Because if I was doing that, I wouldn't be able to do this podcast with you right, right now. So true. <laughs> okay. So I think that this is one of the biggest misconceptions mm -hmm. that we have about prayer is that we have the prayer as an event over here. And then we have everyday life over here. And we keep them very separate because we think, oh, well, prayer is something that I have to do in a closed room by myself. I've got to close my eyes. I've got to like get away. And I can't like, how can I pray without ceasing if I'm always having to make it this event? Mm. So I actually want to go to that verse in the Bible. First Thessalonians 5, 17, it says to pray without ceasing. And I talked to my friend and Bible teacher, Wendy Blight, who we'll hear from later in this series. She taught me the actual Greek word here, pray without ceasing means incessantly unceasingly and without any unnecessary end. And so again, whenever we think the action of prayer is this event, it makes us automatically feel like a failure. So what does it mean then to pray without ceasing? So to understand the command to pray without ceasing, I wanna dig deeper in the context of 1 Thessalonians 5, one through 10. And you guys all have your Bibles, so I'm feeling like <laughs> a little bit of a failure here, but we have the internet. So that's I'm right, gonna pull right. my Bible up on my computer <laughs> here works. and I'm gonna read. There is uh, freedom here. Yes. <laughs> there's freedom here. Um, so I'm gonna read at 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, starting in verse four to set up and give context. It says, but you brothers and sisters are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. And then in verse 16, he says, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So whenever we take pray without ceasing by itself, mm automatically setting me up to feel like a failure because I can't do that. But whenever we go to the context of this verse, we see that Paul, the writer of the book, mentions the day of the Lord. His call to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians 5 was to live in such a way as to anticipate the Lord's return at any day. They were to be on guard. And so I think that mindset, mm. the on guard mindset is more so talking about this prayerful state of mind. So I have to forget about thinking of prayer as an event and think of it as a mindset because otherwise there is gonna be no possible way right. for me to pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. Instead, I bring prayer into my mundane and I take prayer from being an event and my life separate and I make them go together and I do it whenever I can. Love that. So let's again, pay attention to the state of mind and on guard. So I have... You guys, you're, you're gonna read some verses for me because I think that the Bible is really cool whenever we keep this stay alert um, and on guard mindset and we look at other scriptures that talks about prayer. So Ashley, will you read Ephesians 6, 18? Yes. So it says, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Great. So note the words, stay alert and with all perseverance. Mm. Okay, Shay, will you read Luke 21, 36? Yes, it says, but stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and stand before the son of man. That's great. Again, the words stay awake and then pray for strength to escape. So there's what we see and there's everything else that's going on and our mindset, we have to be on mm. guard and be prayerful and always ask God for help. Okay, Megan, Hebrews 4, 16. 4, 16. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. That's great, time of need. I mean, that's the same thing with on guard. I don't know a moment mm. that I don't need help. I think whenever I become a prayer failure, it's whenever I 
don't think that I need help. Does that make sense? <laughs> totally. You know, I think when I, I can think, do it on I my own. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I don't need to go to God, but there's not a moment that I don't need him. And it can mm-hmm. be as simple as just like, I need you right now. Yes. So the key takeaway here, whenever it comes to praying without ceasing, is I believe it's safe to interpret these passages as a mindset shift mm-hmm. towards prayer. We have to stop believing the lie that it's this separate thing that has to be, you know, like, a reverent times at all time, but rather mm. we can pray at any time. And in this series, I'm so excited we're gonna learn ways to do that. Um, and Megan, you actually sent me a podcast episode by Jenny Allen recently. I'm gonna weave that in right yeah, here because it was so it. good. We love Jenny <laughs> Allen. But I thought that this was really cool and um, applies to our teaching today. Uh, in her teaching on prayer, she said that the enemy's goal is for you to hate praying mm. or feel like a failure so that you don't pray. Wow, and this so is good. why we should. And so let's remember, it's not an event. And praying without ceasing is a reminder to keep our eyes up, to stay humble in our humanity. And remember, God is working above and through all things. Mm. We want to keep our hearts available and eyes open to respond with prayer or engage in prayer at any time, even in the middle of the mundane and ordinary parts of our days. So... Now that we've established prayer isn't an event, but an opportunity to bring it into the mundane of our everyday, why do we still not do it? Why? (laughs) So maybe we don't understand it and we don't think that it's actually going to make a difference. Mm. Ashley, you're going to talk about that in next week's episode. And I'm so excited. You're going to help us understand the power of prayer. Maybe we don't pray because we've been let down too many times when God doesn't come through for us or for others the way we hoped and we've just given up. And Shay, you're gonna talk about that later in the third week whenever we talk about prayer and disappointment. And then another reason we might not pray is because maybe we don't understand how to be still because we're so consumed by worries, fear, and anxiety. And we have an amazing episode that Megan and I just got to record with Wendy Blight coming Mm -hmm. up uh, to wrap us up where she'll talk about her own journey with anxiety and how the Lord taught her habits to be still and how that helped her settle, settle her soul. And I'm just excited to talk about this because I think prayer is game changing. It's something God so desperately wants for you and me. And the good Mm -hmm. news is is we don't have to start from zero when it comes to talking with God. We aren't failures. Like, I mean, really, we, we joked about it at the beginning in the ways that we kind of think, oh, I should have done this better. But when we actually come to God in prayer, we can't fail talking to him. Yeah. Like we really can't. I mean, he is right there and he's ready to hear whatever is on our mind. Literally whatever it is, mm-hmm. we don't have to come polished. We can come, we can come as his children knowing that he is there and mm-hmm. he wants to talk to us. So, as we end our time together today, I want to give our listeners some practical ideas for how to uncomplicate it because we talked about where we're heading into. We're going to talk about the power of prayer. We're going to talk about disappointment. We're going to talk about anxiety. Mm -hmm. But in that in-between, between now and next week's episode, I think it would be really cool for us to share some practical ways that we can uncomplicate prayer and weave it into our normal everyday Mm -hmm. life. So... I'll go first. Yes. I feel like I'm Once again, always going first. You. We love it. You're welcome. <laughs> I can volunteer to go yeah. second. <laughs> okay, great. Megan, we'll call on you next. Okay, so uh, one of the things that I'm doing to intentionally weave prayer into my everyday is with my son. Mm. Normal everyday activities with him so that he sees that talking with God is normal and will grow comfortable with it much earlier than I did. This isn't to say my parents did anything sure, wrong. Sure. I'm just thinking, wow, I want him to see that this is so normal so that mm-hmm. one day he doesn't struggle with it like I did at 31, almost right. 32, but he sees it as normal and he wants to do it during the normal parts of yeah. his day as well. Okay. So, That's Megan. Really and we're not sweet. saying that like, we don't approach God with holy reverence for sure, because we for do. Sure. But I think we, our God is a relational God and he yeah. like longs for us to talk to him. And so I think one of the practical things that I've mm-hmm. been trying to implement is just um, taking kind of like the fluff words out of my prayer. That's I feel great. like sometimes, and even thinking about what you said about popcorn prayer, mm-hmm. prayer, when you hear other people pray, you're like, they just like seem to know this language that I <laughs> clearly don't know. And that is mm-hmm. not how I talk. Like mm-hmm. they yeah. had a script. They had a script <laughs> yeah. and I don't have it. And mm-hmm. I think the like, if we're going to talk to the Lord in our like everyday life, as we would a friend or as we mm-hmm. would a companion, like we can take kind of that fluff out of it. And yes, like we're going to talk about praying through scripture and we're going to use that language and we're mm-hmm. going to, talk about how God is holy and powerful and we can approach him as such. But I think Mm -hmm. taking out those kind of like filler fluff words that like, I'm like, do I mean anything I'm saying? Or like, (laughs) can I just say what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, to try to do. I love that so much. Yeah. So Kaylee, you talking about prayer being an event 
I didn't realize that's why I like did Mm -hmm. maybe sometimes like forget to pray or like wait to pray or just like kind of kind of approach prayer with like a lack of urgency. But Mm -hmm. I kind of wonder if that's what it was because if someone texts me, you know, to pray for something or if something comes up, it's like, ah. I'm in this meeting or I'm in my car, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. th- I can't pray right now, you mm-hmm. know, but I've really tried recently and maybe this started out of like a little bit of a fear-based practice mm-hmm. um, because I was just, I didn't like the feeling I felt when I realized I forgot to pray for that, my mm-hmm. friend's uh, interview. So something I've tried doing is praying like right away. So yeah. Yeah. if me and you go to mm-hmm. coffee, Kaylee, and you're telling me about something that's going on, mm-hmm. like before we leave coffee, I'm probably just going to pray like with yeah. you, you know, because yeah. yeah. I can know with confidence, like leaving that meeting, like we we laid this mm-hmm. down at the Lord's feet, you know? Yeah. Um, so just doing that like right away. Um, mm-hmm. If you do life with me in the everyday, you may have gotten like a text message prayer mm-hmm. or a voice yeah. memo prayer. Um but I think mm-hmm. that's just, and my, our friend Maddie, who's on staff here at Proverbs, she's been known to do this too, where she's like, yeah. we have to pray right now, you know? Yeah. But I think just, yeah, approaching it with urgency and, and mm-hmm. weaving it into regular mm-hmm. conversation like we do with friends so much so mm-hmm. that we can just, we don't have to wait until we're like in our secret place yeah. or we're, you know, in our time with the Lord or things are slow mm-hmm. or it's like, no, I mean, sometimes, but, mm-hmm. and also we can just pray right yeah. now. Yeah, that's yeah. great, Shay. And I think too, there's, in addition to thinking of prayer as an event, there's also this um, like tone of reverence or even like there's this personal aspect to prayer where it can be embarrassing sometimes to like pray. Like there had to be a level of comfort that you got to whenever you were like, I'm just going to pray with you, Megan, on the spot. Or if we're at coffee, like we're going to do that because then you're like, well, who's going to, who's going to look at me and all that. And I think that it just, it's something that once we grow comfortable enough doing, Mm. like there's, power even in that and just praying on the yeah. spot for people and weaving that into your everyday, but you have to not care about what other people think. Right. And just breaking away from like the formalities yeah. of like the words that we use or the setting that we like, just all of those things. I yeah. think years and years of like feeling that way mm-hmm. in your walk with the Lord, like that will just really create like a very, um, particular setting where prayer is like acceptable, mm-hmm. you know, and what yeah. we're trying to have conversation around yeah. today is like, it should be as much of a part of our everyday life as, yeah. you know, talking with friends, mm-hmm. going to work, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. making our meals, you know, like you're talking about with Kaylee, like mm-hmm. the everyday things that you're doing with your son. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I guess something for me, this might not be a tip for everybody, but something that really has brought me a lot of growth in prayer mm-hmm. is like praying through written word. And I think that's yeah. because I process through writing. And also it's so easy for me to be like, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm asleep. Yes. Or, <laughs> or I'm thinking yes. about lunch. Yeah, or I'm thinking yes. about lunch. Or I'm thinking about, like, I started to pray about a situation, and then I'm in that situation in my mind, and I'm coming up with good comebacks or yeah. whatever it is, you know? And uh-huh. so I think I try to see it as, and this is, again, more like you have to have time, and maybe if you're into writing, mm-hmm. um, but just writing a letter to the Lord every day and in a real way that you're mm-hmm. saying like, this really hurt my feelings today. I'm really angry about this. I'm really anxious. Um, and then also trying to incorporate also the other things like, and thank you, like we were talking mm-hmm. about in some of the other episodes, you know, but I also saw a good idea that some people do this in their notes app or uh, yeah. they do a voice memo or they write mm-hmm. a text message. And I think that also could be a cool way to also keep track of yeah. your prayers that mm-hmm. if you're driving somewhere and you like, okay, like maybe you need to pray for someone, mm-hmm. you know, you do it, you, you text yourself or something like that. But for me, I just find that if I'm doing like Megan said, it's like taking those filler, like holy, holy, like of course the Lord is holy, mm-hmm. but when you talk to him, like you're writing a letter mm-hmm. or like you're texting him, it feels more like this is real. He cares about this moment. Mm-hmm. And so just bringing it down to earth. Yeah, for bit. sure. And mm-hmm. if the Bible says we are friends of God, then everything in the Bible is true. We yeah. need to take that and treat it like that too. Mm-hmm. Because if we always treat it like an event, we're always going to feel like we have to come in, clean up, uh, like our best selves when God sees everything all the time. (laughs) And I feel like that it strips away so much of the power in it and just bringing all of ourselves to him all the time Mm -hmm. as we are, even if they're things like uh, 
anger issues that we might be having or the the raw feelings that we're having, treating God like a friend, just like you would call a friend up to process Mm -hmm. with. And I think Mm -hmm. the more we do that, the more we weave it into our mundane, the more we're going to want to do that. Megan, you talked about that in our episode with Wendy that's going to come at the end of this, but you said something about discipline. Can you share that again really quick? My college pastor said, and it's written in the front of my Bible, I will not forget it, that discipline leads to desire. Mm -hmm. And I think the important thing to think about as we're talking about how to cultivate a thriving prayer life is it's not going going to come natural or easy mm. the same way exercise mm-hmm. doesn't come mm-hmm. natural or easy mm-hmm. it's yeah. a muscle we have to work and eventually once we discipline ourselves mm-hmm. to do something we start to desire it and mm-hmm. i can see that in my life when i spend time in the word like the more i'm in mm-hmm. the word the more i want the word yeah. and the more mm-hmm. i exercise the more i want to yeah. exercise yeah. and i think the same thing is with prayer like the more i talk to god mm-hmm. the more i want to talk to god and so yes. I think just remembering that if you're feeling like coming into this, like, I don't even want, know if I want to pray Mm -hmm. or learn more about prayer, it is a Mm -hmm. discipline, which means it's a choice, but it's something that the Lord does change our desires as we like continue to do it. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah, absolutely. And we can set reminders to pray too. Like at Proverbs, we have this little music tone that comes (laughs) on. I'm surprised we haven't heard it yet. If we were recording an hour later, we would hear it come over the speakers, but it's a reminder to us here on staff to pause and pray in those moments because sometimes we get so busy in our day, Mm. we forget Mm -hmm. to look up and do that. And so the discipline of developing that on guard mindset is hard, but that's how it leads Mm. to praying without ceasing. So I'm so excited about this next series. And really, I know this was a little bit of a shorter introductory episode, but we wanted to establish like why we pray without ceasing and what that is Mm. so that whenever we get into bigger topics like Mm -hmm. the power of prayer and disappointment and anxiety, we have this foundation Mm -hmm. to build on. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. I do have some announcements. So first, if you're not subscribed to the podcast or our P31 Uh, YouTube channel, please do that right now. Don't miss these next episodes. And Megan, you're holding a really pretty book there. What do you have in your hands? Can you describe it for our listeners? Our latest study guide is called Praying Through the Psalms, 30 Days to Uncomplicate How You Talk to God. And so if you are looking for a resource to Mm -hmm. dive in deeper with us, with us on this. We highly recommend this. Shay and I actually got to work together on this project with Mm -hmm. a few other people on our staff just about how do we talk to God? And mm-hmm. like, where in his word does it show us how to do that? And we see the Psalms as a great place to start. And so mm-hmm. whether you are someone who feels like a seasoned prayer warrior, or you're someone who's mm-hmm. like, what is prayer? And mm-hmm. why do I want to do yeah. it? This study will help you regardless of where you're at yeah. in your prayer, yeah. prayer journey. As we said, it was it's a journey. Absolutely. Yeah. Can you read the title again? Because yes. I think they need to hear it one more time. Praying through the Psalms. 30 days to uncomplicate how you talk to God. I love it so much. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to close us in prayer Mm because I think we need to pray in a prayer series. (laughs) Sounds good. God, we desire to want to pray with you. Mm -hmm. And we're so sorry for the times that we fall short. God, help us to not get so stuck and feeling like we are failures, but remind us, God, that um, we can shake off that feeling at any time because you are not calling us a failure. You call us your children and you are there anytime we need you, Lord. So Lord, whatever hesitations we have, our friends listening have, our friends watching have towards prayer, God, I just pray that you would help us to let those go. God, and to start small with prayer as we weave it into our everyday moments and try our best to remember that you are here and that we can bring anything to you. God, we pray that you would bless this series, bless our listeners and those who are watching. And I just pray that they would learn something, Lord, and that it would plant a seed that becomes something really strong and powerful in their life one day that they can look back on and just say, wow, I'm so glad that I committed to praying and learning how to do it more powerfully, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, friends, at Proverbs 31 Ministries, we believe when you know the truth and the truth, it changes everything. See you next time.